All right, so our next speaker um, is John Yen, Professor of Information Science and Technology at Penn State University, and he is leading another spoke planning project on the topic of privacy and security. This one focused on um, cross-organization cyber attack awareness. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for including us in, in this wonderful event. I'm here to represent our team uh, involving four universities uh, to uh, address this interesting challenge, how multiple organizations can collaborate to counter cyber attack better. Uh, in addition to Penn State, uh, we are also fortunate to collaborate with Rutgers, Dartmouth, and Columbia. Uh, we have uh, Vijay. Vijay, can you, can you stand up? Vijay is our uh, champion uh, for Rutgers and uh, George Sabenko is champion for Dartmouth, and I guess Renee, I can call you the champion for Columbia. Uh, and I call them champion because, to, 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 to in a sense, this project is a change. It's a change to the way cyber defense operates, right? Because currently, there is no sharing between organizations for real time. Now, I should caveat with a, a, a kind of a, uh, 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 this slide first. There are a lot of sharing of cyber, cyber threat information. Uh, Renesec is uh, one of those that analysts use, uh, provide uh, web forums, uh, email uh, sharing, and, and there are also uh, blogs, and uh, those kind of uh, uh, community already existed, and they are very useful for, for analysts to use. And obviously, uh, we want to leverage those. And then there's also uh, sharing of threat intelligence. So the threat intelligence refer to specific so-called signature of a specific event in a chain of cyber attack, like the signature about a particular malware, like the signature about a particular bad website that got compromised. Those information also have, and also signature about so-called ransomware, uh, those, there are also websites that share those information. Uh, and there's also uh, some effort going on in making some aspect of cybersecurity data available for researchers. I think the best example is the DHS imprint project. Uh, but one of the challenge that still not be met is the sharing of near real-time information. As we know, cyber attack happen in very fast pace. Well, sometimes slow. You know, it take, may take years just to, to do the recon. But, but when, when things start to really act to happen, it, it can happen very fast. And, and near real-time sharing is certainly critical. How do we tackle this challenge? After talking to various peoples, we realized we shouldn't assume we know the answer before we know what's the obstacle. Therefore, our first step is to identify the obstacles. And as Rene mentioned in his opening talk, technology is not the obstacle for every problem, so or not all of the obstacles are technological obstacles. For example, the first obstacle that came up is trust. And the trust, and well, I'll talk more about it, but the trust is so critical because usually when we talk about data sharing, we may assume that the data is going to be put somewhere. You know, I think that's kind of a, the most public of sharing. That doesn't require much trust. It may require agreement. Well, to some degree, still require trust because they need to if there's an agreement, they need to sign. At least you trust that if they sign the agreement, they will follow it. And by signing it, they also put their name on that to say, okay, if I violate it, then you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm break, breaking it and then I, I take the consequence. Right? But, but this kind of a, a critical sensitive data really requires deeper level of trust. And, and how, how do we do that? The other challenge is value proposition. People may say, well, we have lots of tools, vendor provided. Yes, 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 we need to leverage those. So we need to find the value proposition that leverages the tools currently available. The third is sensitive information. 
Rebecca talked about privacy. In addition to individual privacy, there are a lot of sensitive information about cybersecurity. IP address of a server, right? A lot of those. And to some degree, from an institution viewpoint, those information may be even more sensitive. Of course, every, all sensitive information are important to be protected. And of course, there are rules and regulations every organization, not just the university, needs to follow. And we don't want to help to protect the university, but then, or protect an organization on the cyber defense front, but put the university on a risk, exposing them to other, other risk. We need to consider all of these risks together to have a holistic approach. And finally, the work of the analyst is already overloaded. You talk to any analyst, they can tell you how much data they need to process and how, how, how much work is needed. The least we need is another thing that makes their work harder. Well, so uh, to address those obstacles, we first try to identify key stakeholders. Uh, for university settings, the key stakeholders include Office of Information Security or you know, offices playing that role. Some university doesn't have that office, but it could be under different offices or could be a combination of offices. Office of Risk Management, Office of General Counsel, leadership of the university. These are all key stakeholders because the decision of whether a, an organization is willing to engage on activity like this involve blessing from all of these people, involve all of them understand the vision, all of them take willing to understand the, the, the trade-off and, and willing to, to engage. And, and we have conducted multiple meetings, telecoms, to, to seek their input, shape our ideas, and then that resulted in a workshop we had last November. And uh, the workshop include key stakeholders from uh, Penn State, Rutgers, Dartmouth, Columbia, and also I forgot to mention, we also have, have an industry partner, IBM, and also uh, uh, government partners such as Army Research Lab, and we are looking for more. To start the conversation, one thing we did as we planned was we thought it would be useful to have something concrete to show in the beginning of the workshop because it's easier to talk in abstract terms, but in abstract terms, you get abstract feedback. <laughs> so we thought, you know, we, we, just, we were naive, right? We said, why don't we just try something very, very simple? So we did a kind of Python query demo to show, well, if you have, can, can have this, uh, then you know, somebody can post a Python query to the network analyst uh, of another institution. You know, so we use a very simple SSH uh, Python queries. So it's just kind of a, 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 a idea to demonstrate what it would help to, to be able to, to achieve. And that demo generated feedback, and which is our goal, and, and there were multiple panels. Uh, one is a panel about analysts. They talk about the value proposition. Uh, we have a panel of concerns of information sharing from people from you know, risk office, risk management office, CISO, uh, people from general counsel from different university. They talk about the other concerns. And then be, based on those feedback, one thing we did that wasn't expected is we adapted the program in the workshop to address those concerns, because we realized you know, the, it, you know, the, those came up from the discussion actually was very valuable and important. And why don't we just use the time to have all these people there to continue and dig into it? And I'm so glad we did that. So those discussions led to the following uh, kind of a, you can summarized uh, feedback we receive. The first is the analysts don't want to be, lacking a better term, to be a so, database admin. They don't want to just to provide the data sources for you to query. They want to know what you know. Of course, that's intu intuitive, right? You know, after that, I say, Dala, why did I think about it? They want to know what you know because what you know can benefit them to defend their cyber attack. The second question, the second thing came up is it's not you know, this notion, initially notion of one-to-one -one peer exchange really can be easily extended and make, make more sense for a broadcast within trusted community. I use the term trusted community. It doesn't mean broadcast to everybody. 
you know, it has to be a trusted community. And, and then we should also leverage distributed data query, right? Because from the get-go, we, we wanted a, a, an approach where data resides where they are. With data resides on you know, different, different institutions. Therefore, uh, if we can perform uh, analytics on distributed data queries, that would be great. How do we go from there? Through other discussions, we came to the conclusion we can, there is a sweet spot. The sweet spot is cyber attack pattern. Cyber attack pattern refers to higher level pattern that how multiple steps are combined together by the cyber attacker. Some people use the term playbook. If you watch football game, you know, you know the, how you know, coach and players use playbook, how they you know, responded to, to, to how defense responds to offense, offense responds to defense. You can see the analogy here. Obviously, right now, you know, the, 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 the defender don't share the playbook. The defender may not even have a good playbook of the attacker. How can we take to the next level? And that's our goal. Uh, and that also is less sensitive because the information that's valuable, you know, it can really be extracted into less sensitive information. For example, if my database server is attacked, you know, I can just say, oh, you know, our database server attacked. Uh, compromised. I don't need to give you the IP address. You don't care. A and that information is already very valuable. And that can also uh, facilitate distributed data creations. So we want to leverage existing efforts. So very fortunately, parallelly, they have all the parallel thinking going on. At least we are aware of one, which is Big Ten Academic Alliance, including University of Chicago, has a parallel effort to leverage sharing of indicator compromise, which deal with you know, what I call signatures of individual effect. And that is the basis we want to build on. And we also uh, know that NIST has a standard for threat signature called STICS and exchange format called TAXI. And both of them have been leveraged you know, by industry to look into tools and we want to leverage them as well. And currently we are developing representation of cyber attack pattern to, we are working on agreement uh, and we have made lots of progress uh, for agreement leveraging the, the Big Ten agreement between the four key universities. And we are working on pilot study to demonstrate feasibility and working on the proposal. Thank you. Yeah, as you indicated, uh, the real-time analytics and processing of the data is the most important challenge of the big data and IoT and all of the above. Uh, and therefore sharing the data is very important. Uh, certain data is very hard to share, like health, etc. I was going to propose that maybe the Northeast Hub can start with the environmental data. There are uh, 500 sensors sitting in the river, Hudson River from Albany to Delaware, generating data about the water, the heat of the water, the height of the water, the direction of the wind, etc. That's the real streaming, real-time data, which is benign, which can be shared, from which analytics can be developed and processing. Uh, we can talk more if you want to, but that would be a very good starting point for the Northeast Hub. Thank you, I, I, I agree with you. Actually, one thing I didn't say as we, as we kind of think about how to represent this attack pattern, one of the critical components is the relationship between cyberspace and physical space. And of course, and I'm preaching to a choir, most people know that, right? But, but, but knowing what the attacker is, got, is going after is really important, right? If, if it's going after physical cyber infrastructure, that information should you know, be translated into everywhere when we talk about cyber defense. So yes, I completely agree. Yeah, so I'm curious, you mentioned that uh, you know, part of this is collecting uh, network data and related information on network flows, et cetera. Do you have a hard time gathering that information or do you anticipate that that's gonna be difficult? Uh, well, that's a good question. So we are, we are working on two things in the same time. Mm -hmm. We are working on leveraging what is already available 
within each institution. Mm -hmm. So by focusing on cyber attack pattern, we don't actually need to, to kind of uh, tell, ask them or tell them what you need to have. Mm -hmm. right? If through the cyber attack pattern sharing, they found that, oh, this information we currently don't have access to. And then each institution, you know, then maybe that becomes a separate uh, effort to, to maybe we can collaborate and go after those, mm. right? But so, so that's a kind of, I view that as a separate question because the cyber attack pattern is focusing on the big questions. So the Department of Homeland Security for a number of years has invested in something called the Cyber Attack Pattern Enumeration and Classification, or KPEC. And I'm wondering how that figures into your work. I love to talk to you more to learn about that. Yes, uh, we, we certainly would like to leverage uh, a lot of information that's out there. Uh, and they are there, there's this notion of kill chain. They study about uh, uh, kind of a, a attack graph being done by cybersecurity, all of these are related, right? And, and, but then we, we want to be able to leverage all of those and, and go to the next level. Thank you. <laughs>